We're here once again with good friend of the channel, Arthur. And uh, we came here, what, 10 months ago, had a look at the fantastic collection that Arthur's got. And uh, well, great pleasure to be invited back, Arthur. Yeah, and, my, um, my pleasure, my you know, pleasure. Love to come here. And uh, we're gonna focus on some new additions to the collection, see what Arthur's been up to. But we've also got a couple of very special bikes. Firstly, this one that we're gonna feature, which is uh, a Triumph Tiger 100 1939 from the National Motorcycle Museum. And we're gonna take that out alongside what's probably the crown jewel of uh, any collection, let alone Arthur's collection. It's a 1938 Vincent HRD Rapide Series A. Series A. Which is a super special bike. So, well, what better place to start really than, than here with this. So Fine. let's tell us a little bit more about this bike, Arthur, and what makes it so special? Well, what makes it so special really is the, is the engine. Yep. Um, the engine is fundamentally the same arrangement as the post-war bikes, which effectively took the fundamental elements of this machine and encased it in the monoblock uh, crankcase. Um, but essentially, as I think a lot of people know, it's a doubling up of the Series A single. Yep. One, two. The cylinders are um, are pretty much the pretty much the same. Yeah, there's a lot um, of similarities looking at that to the sort of Series A Comet and Meteor that I'm fortunate to, to look after, and you can see that. But it's a 47 degree, but it's doubling up, so it's 998cc. It's 998cc. Yeah. It uses an external oil pump that was made by Vincent's, yep. and it uses the Berman four-speed gearbox. Yep. The Berman four-speed gearbox um, had to be specially strengthened because the power of the engine was such that... Uh, a lot of the gearboxes split. I'm pleased to say that I've had this one up to, um, well, I wouldn't have driven it over 70 miles an hour, would I? <laughs> but, uh, but at the end of the day, the gearbox has not split. It's yep. quite a good gearbox and it's fine. The frame is more conventional, if you can call any Vincent conventional, than, uh, than the post-war machines. Um, yep. It's low, it's quite light. Um, certainly compared with the post-war bikes, yep. it's, um, it carries its weight down extremely low. They had problems with these with the, with the clutch. Um, the clutch simply could not cope with the power. And the power being what, 40, 45 brake horsepower? I yeah, I, w I would think a good, good 45 horsepower. Yep. Um, it, it's, it certainly does, does sing and um, it gives true credit to its uh, nickname, the Snarling Beast. Smiling, um, but also known as the Plumber's Nightmare. Yeah, for <laughs> fairly, uh, fairly uh, one, two, three, <laughs> four, five. Yeah. Oh, all yeah. There's about there. ten pipes around this side as well. Um, <laughs> this one's actually um, got a a Triumph clutch in it. Oh, okay. Um, which was uh, which is probably a pretty good idea. Um, it's a Triumph 500 clutch, but it yep. seems to bite quite nicely. It copes a bit better. And yeah. uh, it copes better with the power. You can buy the plates for it and so on and so forth. It did require a change of engine sprocket to get the gearing right. Um, but it was a good, it was a good mod and I'm pleased that was, uh, pleased that was done. Handles, handles quite well. Yep. Um, Other differences to the single then. So in lieu of, because we've got more engine, well, twice as many cinders, oil tank is, is gone from this, hasn't it? Yeah, the oil tank is is in the, um, in the in the top. That's the oh no, that's the petrol. Don't want that. Your oil goes in in this one. Inside, yep, there's yep. still some oil in it. That's good. Um, that's Back in the on. day, this was a hugely expensive motorcycle. Very exclusive in terms of well. First of all, it's performance, 110 miles an hour with these tests. Oh, it's a good, there. good 110 miles an hour. I've, Which... I've had it up to a shown about 115 on the, on really? the clock. <laughs> um, yeah, not on the public highway. No, no, good, good. Or at least I'm not prepared to admit to that, but it really does fly. So it's the fastest thing you could, faster than an SS100 Bruff, technically, then in its day. Yeah. And price wise was the same as the Bruff, as expensive as you could buy back then as well, but yeah. did you, much did, rarer. Did you want a house or a, or or a, a Vincent HRD repeat? I think there were about 80 of these made. Yeah. Uh, figures vary, people have different views. There's only a very limited number actually running. Yeah. Um, a lot are in collections and so on and so forth, which is, you know, which is very nice. 
but it's a shame really because it is a motorcycle to be ridden. Fairly original in most aspects. The uh, brake drums are, are um, a bit special but they are not actually original but they're sensible, sensible modifications. The brakes are passable. Um, it's the best thing you can say about them, really. They dance up better than some, yeah. um, some brakes. Um, looking at the Triumph. Yeah, to be fair, to I rode pretty... this today about 20 miles to get here, and um, it goes an absolute treat, this bike. And But the brakes are mm, not yeah. the best, to be fair. They're not as good as on the Series A uh, single-cylinder Vincents that I ride from the same year, nowhere near. So. Uh, but it does go well, and what we're actually going to do, and what we Arthur promised on the last video was, I he did. said, John, you can come back one day and you can ride my wonderful Vincent Rapide. Yeah. And that is stuck in my mind for all the right reasons. So we are actually going to take this out. And, and you, uh, will, you, you will enjoy riding this because it, one fundamental difference between this and that. Yeah. Um, is that this has rear suspension, of course. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so, um, so it has the, has the traditional um, Vincent-inspired uh, cantilever, yeah. um, which they adopted from very, very early on. And of course, that was copied by the Japanese, as we all know. Um, and uh, and it, does ride, um, it does ride quite so nicely. It's gonna go well, and it's gonna ride well. And then in return, you're gonna take out this uh, this Tiger 100 that we've bought from the museum, so you can yeah, that'll be, in. that'll be really interesting. I've got a I've got a 650 Thunderbird. Yep. Um, which uh, it will be an interesting comparison, comparison to, to that. the uh, to the Thunderbird. Because um, this this is the early, so the Speed Twin in what 37, 38, and then this coming out in 39, running into 40, was the the beginning of the Edward Turner parallel twin ranges, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that, so, that that would have been the sports version. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but as far as this is concerned, there was no touring version. No, it but was that. Is, it was all This or is the one. But we've got a, so, two of the most up-to-date, most powerful, desirable machines from their era. So it'd be great to take them out together. 33 horsepower, parallel twin versus the V-twin, 1,000 seat, well, 998cc, 45 horsepower machine. And, uh, oh, it's going to be magic. So yeah. looking forward to that. And before we do that, we'll have a little look at this ah. sparkling beauty that is just at the side of us. A new addition to your collection since we last visited. Yes, indeed. I, um, I've, I've had a couple of Villa sets for some while and I had a, I had a, a Thruxton and uh, I have to say Thruxton was, was, was really, really good once I'd sorted it. <laughs> um, but uh, to be perfectly honest, um, uh, I don't find the riding position of the Thruxton quite to my liking these days. That's going up for sale at the moment and uh, I was particularly um, uh, enthused to buy this because it would give me a lot of the uh, benefits of the Thruxton in, uh, in a package which is more more so, suited to a, a, a gentleman's Oh, ah, there you style. go, yeah. And it's, it's, a, so, it's got styling which is so popular at the moment with modern classics that you buy. But Absolutely. Let's explain what this is then to people watching. So it's a Veloset engine and gearbox, but it's in a completely different frame and yes. it's got an interesting story. It has. Um, uh, back in the day, there was a gentleman called Floyd Clymer. Floyd Clymer was an American publishing magnate, an extremely wealthy man. Most motorcyclists and car owners will have heard of the Climber magazines uh, and uh, maintenance manuals, a bit like an American uh, Haynes type yep. manual. Yep. Um, but he bought the Indian name uh, and he decided he wanted to uh, reinvigorate the name and uh, make a range of machines. Mm. Um, but he didn't have a factory. So he said, well, I need some engines. So he bought about, I think about 120 engines from Velocets, some Venoms, some Thruxtons. So this is around 1969, isn't it's it? Late 60s. 1968, yeah. 1969. Yeah. Um, he bought a few Triumph twins yeah. from uh, Meriden and he bought, bought a few Royal Enfield twins yeah. from, uh, from Enfield. And he shipped them to Italy to a company called Italje. Yeah. who were well known for electric bikes and kiddies bikes and so on and so oh, forth. Two um, there, yeah. Started by a very famous Italian racer called Mr. Tartarini. 
Mm. Uh, and he said, can you build me a motorcycle around this? And he gave him some indications of what sort of style he wanted. So this is a British engine gearbox clutch assembly in an all Italian chassis. With an American badge. <laughs> With an American badge. So it's a real hybrid of... <laughs> uh, it is. I'm not so sure anything of it it's really um, American. originated from America. <laughs> um, but it's an interesting combination and it's it sort of breathed a little bit more life into a, what was a very, at that point, a very old engine, but a very good single cylinder and it gave it that American street scramblery's yeah, that's, of that's right. A street, to it. street scrambler before before they'd almost existed. Yeah. Really, um, it was most of these went to California. Yeah, um, it was an extremely expensive piece of kit. It probably was significantly more expensive than a Honda CB750 of the day. Yeah, <laughs> you could probably get a Honda 750, uh, a whole bunch of riding kit, and take the wife out for a dinner for a week for the mm -hmm. price of one of these. <laughs> And uh, subsequently, as yeah, it just you wouldn't be surprised, it didn't really... It was 10 years too it late, It didn't really sell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of these came back to the UK um, and were sold by Velocet dealers in the UK. Uh, this one was in California, and it was brought back, I think, in about 2005. Yeah. Um, and it has, it has been restored. Um, um, but as far as I can tell, it's all pretty original. Um, apart from an Later Amor car. Mark II carburetor and the silencer. So in the garage now, recognise this bike. This was previously in the collection that I looked after and then now is in Arthur's custody. It's a, a Black yep. Shadow. Um, you've made some improvements to that, haven't you, Arthur, or some changes? Yeah, I've, I've, I've gone through it to uh, some original components that I had. Um, I've, I've swapped over, changed one or two things. Um, this is to, interesting, though. To make it a little it? bit more rideable. Yeah, I... Um, I did some measurements and, uh, and I found a chap uh, who was into 3D printing oh, and yeah. he, I calculated that if the battery box was about half an inch longer and a few millimetres higher, I could get a much larger capacity 12 volt battery in yep. um, without it detracting at all from the overall looks of the machine. And then while we're on Vincent's then, Egley we saw last time, but this yep. is the big bore Comet that was on the bench. And it's interesting now, you see this, for people that don't know, Vincent's have this quite nice uh, and interesting feature that with the oil tank. Yeah, this is, this is known as the upper frame member. Yeah. And on a Vincent, there effectively is no frame. There is what is referred to as the UFM, upper frame member, and um, yep. the engine number on the um, cast headstock, which is bolted in, um, these are reamed and very, very secure at the front. Yeah. Um, and the rear frame member, which is basically a triangular assembly which bolts onto the back of the motor. That is the frame of a Vincent. So for those people that haven't seen a Vincent with the tank off, that's the old tank this there. is typically what's, what's, what's underneath it. Um, this particular bike um, was raced in, um, or the, rather the engine, was raced uh, on the continent for some years with, with, with some success attached to a sidecar. Um, and it has a 600cc Terry Prince top end on it. Um, so the cylinder, cylinder is much, much bigger than a standard, standard one. And uh, I've got the dyno sheet for this. And um, would you believe the dyno gives it power mm. as 43 horsepower what? at the back Does wheel. Nearly the same as a Rapide. Yeah. I know. Next to that, we've got the, uh, well, it was the first of the larger capacity Hondas to, to land in the market, wasn't it? Or mid-range. Yeah, that's right. This, uh, is, this is the one that really shocked 
the heck out of the British industry. Yeah. Um, this bike is 1966. I think they were launched in 64. The engine is a double overhead camshaft. It doesn't use valve springs, no. uh, nor is it desmodromic. Torsion. Um, it uses torsion bars. Yeah. Um, torsion bars, various cars like Alfa Romeo use torsion bars in their suspension. And, um, and it seems to work. It, and it's a, the model of this, so to say everyone's, it's a CB450, but this particular one, KO, was known as the Black Bomber. This, was, this is the original Black yeah. Bomber. Um, it, it revs like crazy, but actually it's quite, quite respectable mid-range. Yeah. It's got a four-speed gearbox. The later ones went up to a five-speed box. I don't really think it needs it, quite honestly. No. And it's got constant velocity carburetors on. The final one, the Hesketh. We did touch on this last time. I think there was, you were just prepping this ready for the season almost, but this you've been riding and enjoying and you took it to a very special event recently. Yes, well. I did. Um, I, I, uh, to be honest, it, it, it's a big bike yeah. and, uh, and I do find it um, quite a handful at standstill. Yeah. But when you're actually on it, it runs and rides really nice. It's very sweet. The Heskis Club were invited recently to a couple of events. One was the Bentley Drivers Club race meeting at Silverstone, where for some reason they like to put on a display of Heskis. Yeah. And the other one was uh, the opportunity to have a photographic session at Eastern Neston, which was the stately home of Lord Heskis, where yeah. the things were originally built. Yeah. Um, so wow. we had a big photo session there recreating some of the original um, original um, like brochure catalogue photos brochure catalog like by yeah. kind permission of the current owner of, uh, of Eastern Fantastic. Neston. We can't not mention this one off a Sunbeam. I've seen this on the Banbury run. I know it's a really good bike. Yeah, I've, I've, I've lent this to a couple of friends for I think the last four Banbury runs. It's a 1930 500cc Sunbeam Model 9 overhead oh, yeah. valve. Um, is, these were always considered the gentleman's motorcycle. Yeah. Very, very high quality finish, um, good, solid, reliable engine with um, a lot of sporting characteristics. Yeah, that um, engine was an absolute cracker, wasn't it? Right through the tw well, mid-20s, right through to this period. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. There's, there's nothing unpleasant about it, about it at all. The brakes are fairly okay for the period. Gearbox is is quite nice and she runs and starts extremely well. We're in what I call the Pirelli Lounge. Um, and if you look around the walls, you'll see the reason why I call it the Pirelli Lounge. Um, so, um, so all good things come from in here. <laughs> and uh, normally there's a few more bikes in here, but, uh, but they've been sort of moved around a little bit for the purpose of, uh, of, of today. Um, 125 Marini yeah. two-stroke, which we looked at before, but that's now that's now finished its restoration as far as I'm going to to do. Four valve Rudge Ulster, 1937, yeah. which you um, saw before. That goes that goes like stink. But they look cool, don't they? And there's an interesting feature on this actually that, that matches up with the Vincent, isn't there? In the yes, that's right. Game. On the um, on the side, you'll see a big long hat, big long handle reaching up to the engine. This is connected to a centre stand, oh. and of course, centre stands in the 30s were a thing of a thing of great mystery <laughs> um, because nobody fitted them. No, um, but Rudge set uh, set the standard for this really. Third and final room is a very nice space indeed, but there's some bikes that we didn't see here last time, Arthur. Um, Zenith. I've owned this about 12 years. It's a 1927 680 side valve Zenith Jack. What you see is what you get. It's a very pretty motorcycle. It is lovely, lovely and very rare. But talking of rare, the one you're leaning on there then, the MV. Ah, yes. Mm. Which is, I'll, I'll be brutal with you, Arthur, and I don't think you... It's a bit of an ugly duckling until you see the engine that's in it. Oh, absolutely. Um, they're made about 120 of these. And yeah. uh, as I think I said before, the, uh, the fact that something is rare doesn't necessarily make it wonderful. <laughs> but in this instance, it certainly does. The engine is straight at the MV Augusta race shop. And, you know, it's in a reasonably 
solid chassis, shall we say. It's mm. not the prettiest thing in the world, um, but it runs nicely and I like it. It's, it's reasonably powerful. Um, shaft drive, very, very unusual. Probably three or four in the UK. Um, don't know how many of there are still existing worldwide, but uh, so it does make it a, 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 re a real rarity. Yeah, unusual. And these these were a precursor to the sort of seven fifties and the larger oh, yeah, plastic ab ones, weren't absolutely. they? So it's, it's, it's such a bizarre story how they launched. Oh well, we'll get that amazing engine that we've won the world championships in. We'll shrink it down. We'll stick it in a in a, sort of a cruiser style. Easy yeah, going well, bike, the, the thing and then we'll make a sports bike Count later. Count Augusta <laughs> didn't want to make a four-cylinder. No. And he was persuaded by his management to make this bike. But he said, I don't want people to go racing with right, it. Right, so he deliberately, so, yeah. we'll put shaft drive on it, we'll make it a tourer. Yeah. We'll do everything we can to stop people... Racing it. Racing yeah, it. Doing Clubman's versions of the world. Um, yeah. And of course, there are still three or four of these in existence around the world where they don't have engines in because yeah. people did take <laughs> the engines out and That's it. tune them up and so on. This has got twin carburettors, whereas, of course, the race bikes would have had four. Yeah. Um, yeah. But actually, the chassis is pretty much identical to the 750. Yeah. There really yeah. isn't very much difference. On now on Arthur's bike. The uh, Triumph is going to go back to the repair shop and it's broken foot angle. Just going to do a couple of ride by shots and then we'll go back to base. It's not revving it. <laughs> Doesn't sound like any Vincent I've heard before, that one. Absolutely not. <laughs> it is the snarling beast. <laughs> so the minor issue that we've had with the Triumph, with the clutch cable breaking, Arthur has now brilliantly fixed it by well, re-soldering on a nipple on the end of the cable. Yeah. And we've threaded it back through. And that will now get me home, and more importantly, back to the National Motorcycle Museum where it lives, which is great news. And I suppose we've got to finish with the bike that we really came to see today. Well, yes, and, there's a um, thing. I think you enjoyed riding it, didn't you? I, it was an honor and a pleasure. And there's always that saying, never meet your heroes, isn't there? And this is a hero bike of mine for all, lots of reasons. But genuinely, I was blown away by one, how smooth it was, mm. but two, the power up the hills, the torque. And I mean, I was only going gentle on it, hit 60 miles an hour and it's not even trying. In 1937, 38, 39, this must have blown people's minds. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm tempted to think it's, it's actually more powerful than a post-war machine. Yeah, yeah. What, it, what, it, what do you think? I mean, it you, felt you, quicker. You it felt quicker than, yeah. the, than the, the Series C Rapide in terms of its acceleration. And it's just its torque. Um, it obviously, felt, it felt lighter on the front end. It handled really well. I mean, it is, you've got to remember, what was, for me, I sat on it and thinking, it, oh, I'm on my 500. Yeah. Until you come to a stop and try and move it, and remember it is a bigger bike. Yeah. But actually, sweeping through the bends, great. The brakes are more than adequate for it. But the effortless power of that V twin, 45 horsepower, felt more like 85 horsepower. Yes, to be honest, it, it does. And it's such yeah. a visceral uh, experience, and well, I'm just absolutely honoured to be able to uh, and privileged to have been able to ride it today, Arthur. No, it's and just, it's just really, really nice to share share something like this you're not the first person i've i've let 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 ride it um and uh you know and, uh, people shouldn't queue up to ride it <laughs> <laughs> but on the other hand um you know it it's an experience to be shared i like to share experiences no, and, it, and it, uh and and there you go and it is it lives up to its reputation uh, and the legend that is this bike they are superb yep excellent